by the one that change change is created by by the one that doesn't fear that doesn't fear to respectfully disrespect here, War is necessary. We bold every month, not just February. They want us in jail in them cemeteries. Wake up, you a king, you not secondary. Know sometimes it's scary. Keep your head up, king, you legendary. All through your blood is hereditary. Hereditary. All through your blood is hereditary. To make nature understand. To make nature a content. To create future courses. To create new life. A new Facts. We got melanin. Fallen names just want us for medicine. You the goat, you the king, you the veteran. Reach for the skies, your answers are heaven sent. Ha! This is a fact. A God's logic. I am a king. And I am a king who will not run. Cause kings don't run. kings don't run. All right, we live, baby. <laughs> we live, baby. Today, yeah. you got us here on the first episode of I Love You, Black Man from a Black Man. I am your host, Demi Deities, and these are my co hosts. I'll let them introduce themselves. We can start with your choir. I mean, him. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Jay Alpha. I'm Vito. And I said me, I'm Demi Deity. All right, all right, all right. So, before we start every podcast, I'm going to be playing this song called Shundeo by Samo. It's spelled weird, S-A-M-O-H-T. Uh, yeah, that's how you spell it. Check out the song, check out the lyrics. But what while it's playing, I'm going to be reading over it. Check out my lyrics. So, listen to these words. This is what this podcast, the, the purpose of the podcast is. This is what the purpose of the podcast is and what it's generally about. So check it out. We literally feel the need to be lied to by not wanting to hear of darkness, by not wanting to speak about the dark truths so we cover them with the illusions of joy which manifests itself as misfortunes or sin we like the drama if we don't create it in our own lives we like to watch it or there are others of us that stir it up with other people by allowing our own preconceived notions of what joy is to clash with the understandings of others' joy. I say this to say, the clashing of misfortunes or sin or also struggle or trauma, however you call it, it is the joy of us black men. We subconsciously hate other black men because we don't understand how to comfort, comfortably be. In every clash of men, I can prove that true. The realization of this in every interaction between black men, well, between everyone, will yield to you the understanding and respect that is required. This is the point of I love you black man from a black man to bond us as brothers, to build a community of wealth financially, spiritually, mentally, and what we lack an understanding of the most emotionally. Learning to be honest with self behind closed doors and in public, we will all ascend to become demi-deities, men before and before and beforehand and ahead of 
God, and we will be demi deities. Let's take over the fucking world, black man. Let's buy cities. Let our identity of wealth mean community. A community that is never void of respect and understanding, which equals grace and mercy. And let no man, fallen angels or the like, move our position. We are negas. Powerful words. We will hear them every episode so that we maintain an understanding of brotherhood, togetherness, and just togetherness. Like, we brothers. Black men, we're brothers. Despite our differences, we are brothers. Right? Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, all right. So today, uh, I just want to give you all a little brief, uh, I guess, rundown about what the podcast is going to be bringing to you. So we'll have what I want is to bring live bands in, uh, get a five minute little section on every episode to, uh, you know, broadcast their stuff to the uh, to the city, to whomever, who are all the viewers. And um, also... There'll be a monthly segment uh, is I Love You Black Woman from a Black Woman, which I will sit in and then my, the host will be my sister princess. Um, she will come in once a month and it'll be a roundtable talk with black women and black men, uh, but it will be facilitated by black women. Um, and then we're also going to be putting together community outreach programs, you know, Heal the Hood, uh, um, we, I'm also going to try to put uh, together uh, what well, we're going to try to put together uh, um, uh, uh, back to school uh, drive at the end of the summer. That'll be our first event. So it'll be a back to school drive uh, for the end of the summer. Free food, free supplies, uh, all that good stuff. You know, common stuff you see all the time. Uh, but today, what the episode is about is I'm going to ask these black men sitting around me questions that most, probably everybody, mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody asking. So we every episode there will be a hard question asked and us black men will discuss it. So the question today is, when is a black man too old to blame his current problems on his childhood traumas and at what age should a black man own the traumas his father caused as his own? Y'all understand the question? So I'm going to give y'all each individually the opportunity to answer and we're going to start with Uncle Riri. (laughs) Well, I mean, the way I see it, I mean, because of the way I grew up, I uh, I went through a lot with my own father. Right. Uh, being abused mm-hmm. and uh, uh, being abused and and uh, just going through a lot of verbal trauma mm-hmm. uh, with him, and that was that was heartbreaking because you know this was my dad, and you you won't think that you know something like that will happen. You know, but it did, you know, but I don't know what his background was, but I'll get to that later. Uh, Tell me nice real quick. When, when I went through that stuff, it was very hard for me, you know, and I, I I actually got to a point to where I hated my father, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, my father and I literally came to blows, you know, and I didn't like that because I knew that that was wrong, Mm -hmm. you know, but. It got so bad, and it was me constantly getting the abuse. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I left. Uh, I got here, and I myself, because of that trauma, uh, I started blaming him for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more I blamed him for it, the... Worse than I became. And in doing that, it cost me a lot Mm -hmm. for a long time, all the way up till I was about 
43 years old. Boom, you just asked the question. So 43. Yep. All right. But that's not that's not when I forgave my father. I forgave my father at the age of I believe I was about 34 or 35. So what did you just say prior to saying that you forgave your father? What happened at 43? I myself realized I couldn't keep blaming him. So you forgave your father? I forgave him at about, I think I was 34, 35. But I still had a little mess in the back of my head where I was blaming him for how I was. But I had to stop that because the things that I created, were my fault. Correct. So I want you to understand how you just said that at 35 you forgave your father, but at 43 there were still residual things ling- lingering. There were, yes. And there was that, still, so and technically forgiveness yeah. didn't come to 43. It didn't come till 43. Okay. But so we on the I, same I, page. I felt, <laughs> I felt uh, a relief the day that I turned. So... So it was a realization that happened at 35, and then the completion took place at, at 43. All right, we in a, gotcha. <laughs> okay, the question again. First basically, question. basically, the first question is, uh, when is it too, when is a black man too old to blame his current problems on his childhood trauma? And then the second part of the question is, at what age should a black man own the trauma his father caused as his own? Um, what age? <laughs> it's a hard, com- com- it's a hard it's, question, it's, I know. It's, it's a hard not question. really that hard. It's, 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 well, you okay. ain't even hit 43 and it took you 43. I know, man. Well, I got you, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. You advanced. That's why you're an elder, son. <laughs> it always, it always uh, feel easier to blame other people mm-hmm. or just, just not to hold self accountable. But I would say it took me, it took me a long time because I grew up without a father. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, did, I never really knew. I never met him. My first time meeting him was uh, at his funeral. 16 years old, I met him in a funeral in his casket. And so I really didn't. Yeah. You didn't have time to process it because you didn't have nobody there to Pre- process it. Pretty with. much. Pretty much. So, so it was always. So when you, when you, as you are a man now, how do you identify with the fact that you grew up? having to learn to be a man by yourself because you didn't identify with any man as your father. Right. So how did you identify with that? Like, Really, uh, kind of just being in the streets a little bit, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, learning yeah, my way through the streets. The streets grow us yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, so dipping into different things. I and, know. But I, I, didn't, I didn't finally really start taking responsibility until I probably was like uh, about 25. I stopped blaming other people. Um, for my actions and for my past behaviors. What age? 25. So I think that you are a peculiar case because I've been around you since we was boys. Yeah. And, and and watching you grow up, it was, it was you were always a different breed because you moved to the beat of your own drum all the time. Yeah. So watching you come up and, and listening to you talk now, it is kind of dope because... I've never known you, all of the mess you've been in, if it's okay to say, yeah, 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 the mess, because yeah. you're going to eventually talk about it yourself, all the mess you've been in, and you, you never, you've never been one to point the finger. You will say how it happened, but you ain't never been one to say this happening because of this. Yeah. You ain't never been that person. And I didn't know you grew up without your pop. Yeah. That's good to know. Look, we're getting to learn each other. This is what it's about. Bond, black men bond, and that's what's up. All right, 20, 43, 23 because you didn't have a pops, but that that's different. Uh, 43, 43 because your father was treacherous. Yes. All right, treacherous. You need the question again? Eh, somewhat, but not really. 
Okay, this is a two part question. The, yeah, for one part, which I feel part? The the um, with the with the when you should when you should let it go. This is not when I let it go, but this is when you should. Okay. I feel you should let it go when you have kids. Because if you don't let it go by the time you have kids, that spills out on your kids. Generational curse. So that's what that's how that's what I feel. I feel you should I feel it should be when you have kids because you go back and you think of the things that your father did and it should help you think what you shouldn't do yeah. when it comes to your kids. Because you don't want your kids to feel the same pain and hurt that you felt growing up. Because that's not going to do nothing but continue. It's just yeah. it's going to be a circle. It's just going to continue and continue and continue. And <clears throat> you can't you, – you, all you can do is blame yourself as well as your kids blame you. Even though you, you, you should, like – even though your kids should have initiatives to not blame you as much, but you should understand their blame because of your trauma you caused to them. Yeah, because exactly. of your ongoing situation from when you was younger. Yeah, so, I agree with that. Because you can't, you, you don't want your kids to end up the same way you ended That's up. Right. You don't want your kids to feel the same pain that you felt. So I feel when you have kids, for people who have kids. I know for people who don't have kids, it's going to be a little harder. I know it's going to take time, especially not having a figure there to help you through that. So I know it's going to take time with them. But once you deal yourself into that first major situation, to where it caused you more hurt than that, than you not, than because you, you basically, you putting yourself in a situation as in, let's say you go to jail or prison. After you done dealt with that, that should register in your head that, oh man, I can't be like this. Yes, I know I went through the things that I went through, but I need to learn how to let that go. Because by me steady falling into that, I'm going to continue this way. Okay, now, so tell me, so so I'm going to reiterate to you what you're communicating to us, and then I'm going to ask you a question on top of it. So what you're communicating to us is that monkeys shouldn't do what monkeys see. Okay, so when we understand that monkeys shouldn't do what monkeys see, what did monkey do? You, you're the monkey. How old, how old? Answer, answer the question directly from you. From your uh, uh, real life experience now. I'm not going to say that I didn't continue some of the things that I seen. But as in the child form, I thought about all the pain and hurt that I went through. So this is when when my daughter first came about. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't be like that. I know how much it caused pain to me. I was uh, I had my daughter at 22. Mm hmm. So I was like, I can't be like that. I know what kind of pain with that, that'll bring with her growing up, especially as her being a girl. Mm -hmm. So, and then what really helped more is when my son came about. Mm -hmm. So it was like, my daughter, all I have to do with her is be there and, you know, but the son is more, cause he's gonna be more hard headed. Uh -huh. He's gonna be more resilient. So, with the boy, it's like you have. I had to really, really jump into it. Even though, yes, I did do things that I shouldn't have. Still in my head, I was like, I have to. I can't do that. I can't be this way. Okay, I got that. So, we we none of us have answered the question. The first one, none of us have answered it. And the question is. When you sitting back and when you sitting back and you watching, you spectating, you're looking at other black men and you're listening to them talk and you hearing of their trauma and they excuse me, bitching and moaning about what they daddy did in a twenty nine, when do you start judging them? 
Let's be mean, honest. What do you mean? He's judging the parent? Or no, that, the, that, that person. Man. When do you say, bro, you need to grow up? When do you say that to a man who is still uh, uh, toppled by the trauma it's, that it's, was caused by it's hard. Parents? It's hard to do that because if you're not right with yourself, mm. you can't sit there and be like that to him and you perfect sh- let's stop there apply that same logic before your entire story and then tell me what you think if you need me to repeat it to you i can yeah okay great you just said you just said cuz you just said you can't really tell a man no you can't. okay so your entire argument before that was that when you when monkey see monkey shouldn't do yeah. But if a man is unable to register mentally how to adequately perform. You went right where my I, brain I know. was. Yep. Right right where if, if a man can't process how adequately to perform, then you have to absolve him of accountability because he too is still like a child. Yep. He doesn't understand yet. Yep. And you said yourself you've done the same thing. You just said it. If you need me to recall what you said, I can. It was a mental instability that was given to you from the the parent. Exactly. And so what 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 happened is, be, hold on, because I don't want to do the great reveal yet. <laughs> Not until after the song. So, so what I what I what I want you to understand is, is that what you don't understand about yourself is you're a curse breaker. Okay. Yep, he is. And and what 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 black men don't understand, black men like us three sitting here. There's a reason why I asked for you to 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 be my co-host. There's a reason because men like us, we understand immediately what is our mission, and we never mm-hmm. stop. We're not going to stop. And there's not a no weapon formed against the shell prosper. <laughs> I'ma say it like God has said, because what we really want to say, you understand. So we just we just we're progressive men. And you need to own that about yourself. And and I need to, and this black man need to, and this black man, we're progressive people. Mm-hmm. We is this just the nature of our being. And so when you identify what you've identified, you spoke all these words out your mouth yourself. So that means you understand, but your emotions void judgment. So because your emotions is void in the judgment, you like, fuck you, nigga. Oh, my mama is whatever. (laughs) And I know that feeling. I know. I know it clearly. It's like that for most men. Like yeah. it, when, when we, because we, when we think about it, from the time we born to the time we finally understand, yo, yo, I'm a man now. We're, we're, we're men now. From that time, we're taught, don't cry, don't show emotion. Don't do this or that. But when we become men, we understand that we're men, right? Mm-hmm. So then we begin to exude those emotions. And now we confuse this hell. Yeah. Because we've never had time to process these emotions. Half of us don't identify that we grown-ass men until we like 30, if we being honest. And then when we hit 30, we like, I can do what the fuck I want to do. If that's what I feel, that's what I'm going to do. If I want to cry. That's yeah. what I'm going to do. <laughs> what you going to do? Right. So, once we understand that the floodgates open, we turn in a whole bitch. We a whole woman. Because we we spent 30 years of our life suppressing mm-hmm. what they spent the first 30 years of their lives cultivating. So, now we're we're in this period. Like, we are, uh, uh, we, uh. Young. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm, 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 I'm proud to be old. Right, you wisdom, wisdom. <laughs> I, I mess with it all day. But the point is, point is, is that we don't process emotion well. And so when when we're talking to our fathers, when like I had a tough conversation with my pops, like me and my dad have have an interesting relationship. 
Uh, and in the time of me learning, uh, uh, to answer the question for me, how long it took me to stop blaming my father for my trauma, I was 22 when I first came to the understanding. But before that, I fought my dad twice. Yeah. 16 and 21. I ain't trying to do that. And then when I when I turned 22, I'm like, something, something ain't right. Because I don't understand me and ain't nobody else got the answers. But I ain't talking to, 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 to the sack that I'm the seed of. You understand? <laughs> yeah. So a lot that I'm confused about, all I need to do is go back to the sack. Not necessarily. You understand. Yeah, you, you know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> we can't just say it. Yeah, so, right. so, so you, 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 if you want answers about who you are becoming, yeah. Yeah. you just return to the sack. And a lot of a lot of us men don't believe that we can do that because we remember who that man was Past tense. when we remembered him, and we don't give those our fathers the opportunity to see logic now. Well, you know, uh, in most cases, I have seen this where sometimes, whether it be a son or a daughter, mm-hmm. they can't go back and talk to their parent because that parent is still the same person they was when they so that leaves them lost but when you have a parent that you can come to and you see the change but you just don't want to see the change then you're causing a problem for yourself when a problem that you don't have to have that you don't have to have and that's what i learned from punching my dad in the face no lie I pulled a knife out on my pa- I was trying to get that man. Mm, wow. I was trying to get him because that's how aggressive and angry I was at him. But then when I finally hit him, he- the first time at 16, he beat me up. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to 21, I got with him. <laughs> oh, my God. I got dude. But at 21, when I hit him and I saw him stumble and he didn't come back, I understood. This man is changing. Because at 16, he fought me. At 21, he didn't. So I understood in that moment, this is a man that wants to stay. He uh, he allowed me to... I disrespected him. And I'm not playing. We was mid-conversation. He was talking, and I was sick of it, and I hit him. (laughs) You know me. He was was like, David, you are... We get to fight. He whooped me. Rightfully so. But I realized after I hit him, I can't do I can't be on that. Because this man recognizes that, yo, I fucked up in the past. But I'm going to take whatever beating this boy has to give me till he realizes that I'm right here. No matter what, you can you can dish out whatever you trying to give. You can say whatever you trying to say. You can continue to be whoever you want to be, but I'm not gonna go back to who you remember right. to satisfy your current that's agenda. Because right. that's exactly what so we're gonna do. that 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 and, and most men. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. I had a father who did that. That's why I raised his kids. My dad is a good man, but I took on the responsibility of. Raising his children, being the the father figure for his children because he was unable to. And I realized that it wasn't because he didn't want to. He never knew his father. He don't even know what his father looks like. So when I understood that, I'm like, let me show my father how to be a father because I too love him. So you're right. When a child, when you have kids and you realize, I don't want to repeat the same habits that my my parents did to me. Once you realize that, it's also in reverse. You now have a responsibility to that parent because you are now a man. So now it's your responsibility to give that opportunity to see if they're gonna let you punch them in the face. Not literally, mm-hmm. <laughs> metaphorically. Yeah. 
So they, 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 that's them literally, it's, it's on you. It becomes the man's responsibility now, not the father. Because the, the boy, I'm going to talk to you nice. The boy is still spewing disdain. He's too emotional to have a conversation with the other man. Because now you're not dealing with a father because you're a man. You're dealing with another man. And instead of us realizing that, we void respects that we know we can void. And we disrespect the man. Now, what if that other man returns the disrespect? Boom. Cataclysmic. Yep. And it can never mend. Nope. So, I think, personally... A sound man, a sound man with solid roots, that means that he has at least a mama or a granny or something. I think by the age of 30, a a gentrification should begin to shift, like your mind should begin to shift, and I mean, I felt it. I felt it because I, I mean I got married at thirty. You know I was t- no more hoeing. Like, yeah. like I got married at twenty eight. So. See, yeah, it happened around that time. I feel because yeah. I felt the transition starting at around twenty eight, but then it completed because I was I didn't want no more friends. I wanted everybody to get the hell away from me. I just wanted to make money, buy a house, own cars. Bit I'm like it just it just transitioned. And when your mind transitioned like that, you can't hold on to. That's a lot. That's a big bag to still carry yeah, while still it, trying it, to. It can cost you, man. I mean, look at what mom and I went through. Uh huh. You know, and, and I love that lady, man. I, I will not stop loving her, man, because she still stuck with me, man. Yeah. And, and she didn't have to do that. That's that's true love. And so, when when you see stuff like that, and then uh, you see your child hurting on account of something you were a part of and then me understanding what I was a part of and how I was hurt, I'm hurt. You know, because, because you that's understand not something what you've done to right. the child. And and and, and, and that's you, not man. something that I actually wanted to do or meant to do intentionally. It just happened. It's a reaction. And and, and, and I'm like, oh my God. I did this, mm-hmm. and I, I cried so many nights. I'm trying to stop from crying right now. I know I can see it. That's you why I'm know, not looking at you because I ain't I with that. I cried so many <laughs> nights. <laughs> I, I, I cried so many nights because I'm like, I feel my son's pain. Yeah. I literally can feel it. Yeah. And so when you feel that, it's not it's not a good feeling. And you, all you want to do is just hug them and just say, I'm sorry. I mean, it's nothing else you, you can, can do, do and just become, you know, better in the relationship. But it takes two. It, one person can't just do it. It takes two people. And, and, and if you say you love somebody, because love is not just something you say. Love is an action word. It's mm-hmm. something that you do. So you begin once you begin to understand what love is, you gonna want to you you're gonna want to do better, you know. You're gonna want to think differently, you know. And 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 that's where I am, you know. I'm 53 years old. I'll be 54 this year, mm-hmm. you know. And from the age of about five, where I can remember my first abuse from my father, all the way up until I was the age of 43, still thinking about that mess. It took. And I have to say this. It took God, literally, to lift that mess off of me by whooping my tail. And I got a butt whooping. Tell us what you mean by what whooping, because I don't think everybody knows. Spiritually. I I I got a spiritual whooping. That is how that feels. I would rather get beat (laughs) by my own daddy than take that. Because it feel like, like, for real, spiritual whoopings feel like... uh, 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 how do I explain it? It, it feels like it's hard to explain. Yeah, it is hard to explain. You have to go minute. through it. You lose your car. 
You lose your house. Oh, you no. You lose your job. No. Wait a minute. Wait okay, a minute. Okay, okay. Get there. Let me get there. So, first you got to feel, uh, the, the, the flesh got to feel whooped, too. Ooh. So, you get stripped of everything. You ain't got no car. You ain't got no... You ain't, you ain't got, got no, no, no You ain't got no job. Man, you ain't got <laughs> nothing. You, ain't, you barely got cash in your pocket. <laughs> you trying to figure out you going to your mama house still to eat. Man. Not and no. then, all of a sudden, you get in the word. Yep. And that's where the spiritual whooping start getting. Yep, because then you start to understand your stupidity. Ooh, wee. I remember mm-hmm. one day. I have to tell this story because I tell a lot of people this story. This is when it began. I was uh, in a rescue mission. That's where I was. That's where I was living, in a rescue mission. Talk to us nice. And I'm sitting in this rescue mission. And literally in the bathroom on the toilet. And I heard God call me by my name, Maurice. I don't want you to say nothing. I just want you to hear how these people hate me. Those was his exact words. And he said nothing else to me. So I was fasting this day in the rescue mission. I did exactly what he told me to do. I went into the chapel and I sat down. And literally, these people were sitting around me saying ugly stuff about God. It ain't no God, and he ain't nothing but a myth. And they was just saying all kind of crazy stuff. And I'm sitting here, and all of a sudden, I'm tearing up, and I'm like, oh, my God, they do hate you. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking out of the door. This still on my mind. A week later, I thought about it again. I had no idea this had anything to do with me. Mm -hmm. I'm still thinking about how these people literally, they really hate God. And so I'm walking down the stairs and I I just thought about it again. I was like, oh my God, they really hate you. He punched me in my stomach. (laughs) What? He punched me in my stomach. He said, that's how you hate me. Oh. And when he said that to me, my knees buckled. And I cried so hard I could not stop. And I was like, I didn't know this had anything to do with me. But he was talking to me about my behavior. Mm -hmm. How I treated my son. How I treated my wife. How I treated people, period. Because these people are his people. And I misused them and and, and mistreated them. And and so I I had to take all of this stuff. You know, uh, and, 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 and when I started just accepting it, like, okay, I'm, I'm not right. And I can't do it without you, Lord. That's when the change started happening because I had to own up to how I was being looking at my wife before we got back together. She smiling and having fun with her family. And I'm sitting in the car like, why she smiling and happy? And I'm sitting in here like this here. And he said to me, because I made you the head. When he said that to me, he was letting me know you were the man of that house. And you did not do what you were supposed to do. So I'm going to, Unk is is from a different generation. So I'm going to reiterate what he said. And I'm not going to say it uh, uh, spiritually. I'm going to say it of my flesh. That's good though. Yeah. I'm going to say it of my flesh. And then we're going to go to a break. So this at this portion of the podcast, this is where we need artists to come in and be a live band over there. Y'all perform, y'all, whatever y'all got. Um, I'm not looking. It don't matter. Just hit me up. Uh, I don't got Facebook no more, but I'll put my Instagram and et cetera in the bio so y'all can check it out. But check this song out. It's... Kings are falling every day And kings are rising just the same But when will we know who we are? I see your light, you are my star Blessed are those who make it home To know that you're never alone And know that it's
it's okay to cry Can't get no better in my eyes yeah. We worry about so many things I'm not concerned with I don't want nothing from these people less I deserve it I'm tired of playing a fucking clown up in the circus You rest and respect up on your name, you gotta earn it When you feel down and you out, you gotta keep working Whole time I promise you, you living right in your purpose The negative energy that's coming, you gotta curve it Encourage yourself, then you slide just like it's cursive Oh, kings are falling every day Kings are rising just the same. Oh, but when will we know who we are? When will we know who we are? I see the light, you are my star. I see the light, you are my star. Blessed are those who make it home. Blessed are those who make it home. Don't you know that you're never Never is a time so precious, ever been so pressured and prevalent where kingship is more relevant and the stories that we tell are a testament to those who we are and who we should become. My dad's name is one of my son's names and two kings share my soul, two heart beating, one blood and one throne. If you're a king, then you know, you are a king, you should know. All right, all right, all right. We back with I Love You, Black Man from a Black Man. And this seg- this portion of the show, this will be the last half hour of it. So what I want to bring to y'all attention is we have a father and a son sitting here. And the point of this episode was to get this father, this black father, and this black son to Memphis. Whatever. <laughs> and, uh... So that's that's pretty much what this episode was about. But the first half, I wanted everybody to get a general perspective on how we thought about this, what we thought individually about the situation, mentally, physically, and emotionally. So that's what we did. But now we're about to get to the nitty gritty and have the real conversation. So I'm I'm willing to listen to my son. All right, I want to hear what my son got to say. So I. I'm just going to facilitate. So when I feel like one of you are not understanding the other, I will immediately mute you because that's when you both begin to get not you so much anymore. (laughs) You. That's when you begin to get unreasonable. So if I cut you off, I'm going to cut you off really aggressively and concise. So... Don't get mad at me. If you do, you know I don't give a damn. You know I don't give a damn. All right. So, go ahead, Jaquan. Uh, <clears throat> as in the kid thing, yeah, I look at it, but that ain't, that's like, that's not even my problem no more. I know. And I gave up on that. Like, it is what it is because it's not even you that caused the problem. My mama caused the problem too. But as in, it's just as in now. Since my kids, my daughter, 
when my daughter was first born, we I don't know how we ran into each other, but we ran into each other. You had your car and everything, and we went someplace. Then we end up going back to my house where my daughter was just a baby. And, you know, you was telling all these things about, oh, I want to be there. I want to do this. I want to do that. You got a car at this time. You come this one time. You preach all this stuff, and then never again. And it was always, it was always, when am I going to do it? When am I going to do it? And I have done it multiple times. Brung my child around. Only way my child came around to family events is because I brought my child around. It wasn't because you came and got us to bring us around. It's because I brought them around myself because I felt like you needed that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you repeat to him what he's saying to you? Well, it's... It don't so respond. No, no, it sounds like he's saying to me that he... Uh, He wanted his I mean, his children to be around me, and I, the things that I was saying to him about me wanting to be around them, uh, I started out as uh, trying to do it, uh, but I did it one time, and it didn't happen again. Okay, okay. Is that? Are you ready for a response? Yeah, one second. Okay. Uh. I just lost a train of thought, though. Uh, It'll come back. I just, I just lost a train of thought. Okay. Quick. Okay, I'm going to let him respond. If you remember it, just put your finger up, and then we'll come back to you. Okay, I remember the first time that uh, we ended up around each other. We were at my mother's house, and you brought Brittany over for the first time. That was my first time seeing her at at my mother's house, and uh, mom and I were still going through a lot of stuff, and I still really didn't have a place to live. Yep, I did have that car, but that car eventually got taken, but that's another story. Uh, I was trying to find, still find myself going through that was a very difficult time. Uh, I wasn't trying to alienate anybody, it happened. Uh, I uh, wasn't mentally there because I was going through so much. I was going through so much in my head. Can you be specific? Figure, well, as, as far as what am I going to do? I, I need a job, but I can't find no job. I, I don't have a place to live, and I'm here with my mother. And now they're talking about locking me up. And then I ended up on a bracelet, and I just was going through so much, and I didn't. You ended up staying with I, us. I ended I up. Remember? Yep. Mm -hmm. And and it was it was pretty it was pretty messed up for me, and I was lost. I was just lost, and I'm like, I'm too old to be in <laughs> a, a situation <laughs> like this, you know. And 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 so yeah. when I was going through that mess, I unintentionally hurt you. And it caused me not to uh, fulfill what I spoke to you. And I'm absolutely sorry about that because I, 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 at the age that I was, first off, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed because that's that's not a, a good feeling that your son watching he, his dad be in a situation like that, homeless. You know, you go, you you see your dad one place, and then next thing you know, he hit rock bottom. Um, can I ask you a question real quick? Mm -hmm. That seems to be a mentality that most men from your generation have. Like, if you don't have money or stability, you can't be around your kid. No, it that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, what, what I'm, what, yeah, that, that that's, really yeah, that's no, what that's not what I'm saying. No, even, even that's even. not what I'm saying. I'm, what I'm saying is, me being in the situation that I, I said it, me being in the situation that I was in, it had nothing to do with money. 
it has something to do with me. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So, so what you're saying is that you were not able to uh, uh, be around him because it wasn't just your uh, the physical things manifesting in your life. It was your. The, it was the my mental. mentality. Yeah. Gotcha. My okay. mentality, and so I, I said what, that. So, and I, so the answer to to the question is that. That is what you believed, and your mentality had you stuck there because of the situation. Because you were of the in, situation and then that I was when you in, got out and of the situation, you begin to see clearly. I began to see gotcha. clearly, and when I began to see clearly, at this point, he already when he's hurt. He's angry. Yep. You know, and so now I'm like, man. At first, I'm tripping. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then I started thinking, and I'm like. Well, you, I was like need that. To, you, you know, I yeah. Like and so, and daddy. I was just talking to mom about that. I was like, I know where he is. Yeah, you I was, talking was to me about I it. was angry, but I wasn't so much so angry because still in family events, I brought yeah. my child around. Yeah, you did. And everything you did. was still, and it was still to me. It was still ongoing lies. Even when, so what did I say? Even to when you? my son came about, it's. I want to be in, I want to be I know son I haven't been in your life like that this this and that I want to be I want to be there for my grandkids I want to I want to do this with them I want to do that I want to spend time with them and so forth <clears throat> and it was it was my daughter came about okay we didn't we didn't we 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 went through that with my daughter but then it kept going because my son came about and we was this because when my daughter came about we was living with with my my kid's mother and her family and then when my son came about we was living in our own place you only came over there one, one time. time yeah and we came on the bus we ain't had a car then but that's another thing that got to me because to me you were you were eligible to travel multiple places on this bus. You didn't we had a car. You never called me to come, you know, son, come pick me up or something, you know, just chill with the kids or so forth. You never done none of that. You got everywhere else on the bus. You'd have been the malls. You'd have been here. You'd have been there. But still was no effort I see, I see. to come I to see. my to to no now I got two kids now. I see. So it's like I then like so it, what he what I have always been able to hear him and repeat what he's saying in less words because he's smart as hell. Oh yeah, he I just uses a lot of words. Like that. Yeah. So what he's saying, and you got it already. Yeah. But the bottom line of what he's saying is, he wants you to repent with your grandchildren. Period. Where you lacked with him, you must make up with your grandchildren. You don't need money. It's not the money. No, it's the I, time. I, I, I my kids, my I kids love you. Yep. They you. adore you. They are excited to see you. I hear you. And, and you, you are absolutely right, son. I mean, and, and this was, this was my, my, my thing. I, I, I want to say this to you because I don't want you to ever think that I need an excuse. Uh, I don't need an excuse. Talk to a um, nice black man. I was man. just allowing you to understand where yeah, I man. was mentally. I wasn't in the right place. Uh, I'm not going to deny what you're saying. If I sit here and deny what you're saying, I'm lying. And that's going to create more problems. I don't want to do that. I just want you to understand where I was mentally. You know, I still, I'm still growing. I'm still learning how to be, you know. Uh, and, and, and so in doing so, I understand that I have to get better. Understand that there's things that I have to do. Uh, I don't like to use the word prove, but in this case, it doesn't bother me, you know, because you're my son. And you said, and I have, I have, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Th this is groundbreaking. I don't think many, uh, m men need to hear what he just said. Can you repeat what you just said? <laughs> I was just saying that I didn't need an excuse. There we go. That's it. That's all I need you to hear. This man said he didn't need an excuse. And you know why? Because he took accountability. That's what so many black men lack. Accountability. He said to his son, I don't want to lie to you or tell you that you're lying. 
because that will be me lying and creating more problems. What that means is I respect and accept your rendition of the truth and I will own it also as the truth. And I will respect you enough to not tell you that that did not happen or that I did not do that. I did do that. I, I have actively participated in being negligent per your standards. Yep. That is what he is communicating yep. to you. That is what he said loud and clear. And that is the epitome of what a man is supposed to do. Yeah, I understand that, but it's like the continuance. So, so even now, with you owning up to it, you didn't own up to it more than one time. No, but, this is my first time actually owning up to to uh, what you're saying to me because, I, you know, I never really got this from you. Mm-hmm. You know, we never really sat down and, and just talked. And so this is the first time that I'm getting this from you. Uh, the, what you're saying to me is I've constantly said to you that I was going to do these things and I continually didn't do didn't it. Do it. I, right. I, and, so and it done. bothered you. And, and and I I get that I hear that, you know, and that's not where I'm trying to be right now, you know. I don't want to be right there anymore. I mean, it's 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 for me to take accountability for who I have and have not been. Yep. You know, and I don't I don't have a problem with that, son, because I don't want to have a bad continue to have a bad relationship with you and have a bad relationship with my grandkids and 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 have to have you uh uh walk around with this heaviness upon you like that that's uncomfortable because it was uncomfortable for me when I was going through it so I know what you feeling I understand what you're saying to me because it was done to me. So what he just said to you is when you when you find something that he's done that pisses you off, tell him. Because he can take it. And he will take it. So now what, what he started the conversation off saying to you, and I want you to know that he's not just saying that because we're sitting here. These are conversations that I've had with him personally. And he said these same things to you. To me, which is how I knew he was ready to talk to you. So this ain't something he just saying. These are things that I know he's been 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 boiling in him, just like I know what's been boiling into you, because both of y'all talk to me. So these are things that he has said to me outside of sitting here. And with him saying that, he also started the conversation with saying that he can't do it alone. All he can do now is hear you out and take the beating and move how you say you need him to move. So right now, if you could ask him whatever you wanted to ask him in the current state that you are in now, what would that be? What do you want from him currently? Truth be told, I'm at the point to where I don't care no more. Like, I don't need none of that no more because... I have my kids. So remember when you say that, remember that I don't ask the question like, what do you, Jaquar, your physical be- being actively want from Maurice, your, the being of your father? What I mean, what would you ask of him is I'm not, I'm not looking for you to say, let's go to the bar and get drinks. No. I'm not looking for you to say that. No. But you begin your argument with the fact that he is not present in your children's life. So to me and to, to to me sitting here being an outside spectator it sounds like that is what you're sequestering. Like you is that what you're still asking for? No. Not, okay. It's not asking cuz it's been too long. So to me I'm at the point I'm going through so much already to where it's damn if you do and damn, damn if, if you, you don't. don't. So, so what that means is, let me, let me make sure, correct me if I'm wrong. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. So now you shot the ball and he rebounded because you missed. So now the ball is in his court. So you either do or you don't. So what that means to you is 
you either do or you don't. Do you you go get your grandkids? You go see your grandkids? You be become active in their life more often? Yeah, I don't have no problem with that. It's, you know, I just you know, I just don't like this tension. You know, I'm like I said, I'm I'm getting older. You know, you're gonna have some ups. You're gonna have some downs. But I don't want this kind of tension. Uh, with my son, and I don't want to be able to or not be able to see my grandkids because of it. So that's he's he not telling you that. I, I know that, but it it feels like that. No, it, it, it's it's the reason why it's gonna end up getting like that to, is because I plan on leaving. I, I'm not. I'm not. I can't. I I have too much history here. Bad history. Mm-hmm. So. My plan is to leave. I wasn't telling nobody. Well, David probably would have known, but it was going. It would, the only way it was going to be is you saw him as if you flew to where I was at. It wasn't no. Oh, I'm going to send him. It was if you come. Oh, no, you yeah. It you weren't going to ever see him then. Right. So it, it again. It, you you're just repeating the same thing. The ball is in your court, and and you have to make so. You're focused on the relationship, the, the tension between you two. Yeah, I don't like that tension. Okay, so let me tell you how to dissipate that because that tension, it, it was there for me and my father. So now when I speak to my father, I literally don't feel tension. And the reason I literally don't feel tension is because I say everything I want to say. You understand? So when, when, when you when you talking, when you talking to someone... And you've you've caused strife to that person. And when you've caused strife, you are no longer the dictator of how they heal. So the only thing that you can do is wait. Yeah. So what the only way to soothe the tension is to be active the way he allows you to be active. So if he allows you to be active with the kids, that is an easy pathway back to your child easy pathway but you have to endure the tension because it's not going to just lift for him because like you begin the podcast saying it didn't lift you to 43 yeah it took a minute right for me, so, but it's you know people are different you know? people are different and he is growing faster he's growing out of that's why he's a curse breaker well, he always been like yep that. and you know it you know it so right now the the tension is is inevitable and the, what, what I read in the beginning of this po- podcast, people don't like to hear of darkness. And the truth is that. And, it it and, is to and, people who won't admit it. Correct. And that's, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to get you to see. We, right now, you are in a space where you don't want tension. Yeah. But you are not open and ready to admit that it's inevitable. It's going, you, no, I am. Okay, so since no, we there, yeah. then you understand that you saying that you don't want the tension? I, no, I said I don't like it. Okay, cool. Yeah, My bad. I, okay, I don't you like, like it. it. I know but you understand in, it's, yeah, ine- it's, it's, it's inevitable. inevitable. I understand yeah. that it's in- inevitable because of what I went through with, with my father. Correct. So, you know, it took me a minute, you know, and now I can I can go around my, my pops. But it, 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 I could go around my pops after I uh, forgave him. I could start going around my pops at well, I think I said I was 34, 35. 35. You know, I can start going around him then because I'm like, man, you don't know what his life was like. I mean, he did y'all bad. And so, you so know, but that I don't know what his life was like. But so I had to turn loose that tension because, like I said, I had came to the point. I don't know if he has gotten there yet, but I came to the point where I literally hated my father because I used to get beat, mm-hmm. you know, and watch him. Uh, he didn't put rifles to my head. So I went through a lot. So I, I hated him for what how he did me and then how he did my brothers and then my baby sis. Mm-hmm. You know, I I was I was man. Mm-hmm. I, and there were many times where I almost had my pops killed. Mm-hmm. I, I hope that ain't going viral. <laughs> you know, I, I even brought some some cats up there. Mm-hmm. And and you know, that's just how bad it got. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. I do understand where his mind at. I understand where his heart at. And I'm not mad. If I can't 
what he's doing right now with me. You wouldn't have been able to do with your father. I wouldn't have been able to do with him. And then here's the other thing. It still hasn't happened. And it won't. And it's not going to happen. Yep. So I've accepted that. But you are a different but man. But he's you been. Are, wait, right. You're you you a curse breaker. Exactly. That's nice. And now you've created a curse breaker. Exactly. And now you need to, what you just said, the time that it took you, you are your father and he is you. Yeah. So the time that it took yeah. you, so he ain't he 32. Yeah. Give him three more years. <laughs> but he knows he is. He has to be no ski is live. Um, and I'm, then I'm, it, I got yeah, it. we going to be good. I got it. But in those I three it. years, I got it. the relationship will, it, it will take a natural course by itself through the children because what's going to happen is they already love you. The kids already love you. I've even had conversations with with uh uh Yana, with Jason no Jason about you. Like I had conversations with him about you too. Matter of fact, he asked me. So, what what he called Paul Paul right? Paul Paul. He yeah. said he said, uh, you Paul Paul brother. <laughs> I said no 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 no. I'm his <laughs> nephew. And then he was like, no. I'm like, all right, we ain't having this conversation. <laughs> <'Cause> you, <you're laughs> no, but the the kids already love you, and they already ask for you, so that keeps you on his mind. It's inevitable. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and in the time that you cultivate in a relationship wow. with them, inevitably y'all will cultivate a relationship again because yeah. you have to yeah. to function in the kids' life. So, right now, don't focus so much like like you know. For a fact now, that he is aware, unequivocally aware. You know for a fact. And you know for a fact now that he is not going to reject your presence. Yeah. You just have to just have, be yeah. present. Especially as a no. Yep. Within this year. I know. I know. We gonna we gotta we gonna <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so so in this year, he needs you to be more present than than ever. No, I'm, I'm sure of that. And, and and I'm there too. I'm there too. So that that's what we so we can agree that that's where we've agreed. You become present gotcha. because on, he this, is open. It's another one. Okay. It's no, one. it's another one coming. Another one. Oh, baby, yeah, that yeah. What you say, Brittany? You didn't yeah, know? It's my third. My little boy. A little boy, another boy. <laughs> yep, and that's good. See, look, this is good. You're about to be a grandfather a third oh, time. Lord God. Fourth oh, time. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm going to tell her, too. Okay. <laughs> what y'all talking about? No, I, that ain't my, I'm, I'm just the cousin. I'm <laughs> no, no I do have four grandchildren. I know. Oh. Veronica. That ain't my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. My plate. That's a shame. You'll get there. You'll get. It's gonna come to you, no. Uncle Maurice. It's okay. This is the healing process. <laughs> this is the healing process, and this was a major healing right now. This is the best conversation in in my yeah, 30, I, 31 I years of living. For, for a while, this is the man. easiest I... conversation I've ever had with y'all. But that's a wrap for the first episode of I Love You, Black Man so from a Black Man. Second. Oh, we're going to come on the second one because you crazy about that black. Yeah, you, you <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that, Uncle I mean, you, know, you got to understand. I you feel know, the same way, though. About black. That's because y'all light skin. See, that's no, the thing. No, that's colorism. We're going to talk about light skin. It ain't about being light skin. Yeah, it ain't about being light skin. It's true. The color black is this. All right. All right. Yeah, so, I mean, the like, next episode of the podcast will be about me talking man. about... Uh, how a black man survives after being gang raped by other men. Man. So, uh, the next episode will be about that. Make sure you tune in. I'm going to be honest. I'm an honest person. I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to just be 100. Uh, tune in in the next episode of I Love You, Black Man from a Black Man. Thank you all for tuning in. Peace. By the one that change, change is created by, by the one that doesn't fear, that doesn't fear to respectfully 
disrespect. War is necessary. We bold every month, not just February. They want us in jail in them cemeteries. Wake up, you a king, you not secondary. Know sometimes it's scary. Keep your head up, king, you legendary. All through your blood is hereditary. Hereditary. All through your blood is hereditary. To make nature understand. To make nature a content. To create future courses. To create new life. A new way of being. Facts. We got melanin. Fallen names just want us for medicine. You the goat, you the king, you the veteran. Reach for the skies. Your answers are heaven sent. Ha! This is a fact. A God's logic. I am a king. And I am a king who will not run. Cause kings don't 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 run. Cause kings